Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be a quick overview of the Auto FPS tool for MSFS 2024. If you guys uh, haven't downloaded it yet, it is now updated for 2024. So should be able to use it for the new sim as well, which is great. Um, I'll go over the settings that I use for Auto FPS. So when you download it, by the way, the version is 0 0.4.4.0. So when you download it, uh, make sure that all the all the files that it needs are getting downloaded and nothing fails. If everything goes well, you should be able to, as soon as you open the sim, you should be able to see green on MSFS 2024, sim connect and session. Now let's go over the settings real quick. So I'll double click, which will bring up the general settings here. So what I use here, by the way, I have frame generation on in the sim. I am using the frame gen active FPS target as 100 and I'm always leaving it on top I just basically move it to my other screen so that if I want to change some settings I can I can change it on the fly uh, I'm not using auto target FPS what this means is I'll basically be targeting 100 FPS uh, with frame gen so that means internally it's going to target what 50 FPS right uh, because frame gen will be doubling the FPS but basically to my eye I want to see at least 100 FPS um, and this target can be according to your uh, your hardware um, VFR or IFR sure if you're using if you're not using expert options then sure you'll be um, using either of those two settings and you can check out in the documents what the default settings are for VFR and IFR but for me it doesn't matter because I'm going to use expert options here uh, one more option you'll see here is uh, there'll be a 20 MSFS 2020 versus 2024 button before you open the sim so make sure that that is switched to 2024 otherwise uh, it will not detect the sim session so now uh, already gone over my target fps 100 is my sweet spot let's open up expert options here and in expert options the first one is the auto method so what method do you want to follow in terms of uh, you know how it tracks the fps versus uh, what changes it makes to achieve that fps target I won't go over the details of all of these, uh, they're there in the in the manual page which I'll leave in the description. But what I use is FPS sensitivity and uh, I use the default value of 5. Um, I'll see if I see instances where it is uh, changing the TLOD values too fast and it's causing stutters. If, if it is, then you can reduce this value from 5 to maybe 1 or 2. What this value does is basically decides how fast the TLOD and OLOD are going to change to uh, increase your FPS right so it detects the difference between your target FPS and the FPS that you're currently getting and then slowly increase or decrease your settings right to to achieve that FPS so that's what this value is doing higher values will lead to bigger changes in your settings so it it, it, it wants to get to that target FPS faster and smaller values in this will mean smaller changes to the settings uh, to get to the FPS value. For TLOD min, I have set it to 100 and max 600. Very self uh, explanatory here. 100 is the minimum TLOD that I want and this can be 50 if, you're, if your system is a little weaker uh, on the weaker side on CPU. Uh, you can set this to 50 but for me 100 at all the airports works just fine so i want a minimum of 100 and a maximum of 600 whenever it can achieve 600 okay so that's uh, tlod min and max i'm not worrying too much about these plus and minuses if you really want to get into that um, tlod max plus is basically used for mountain flying i haven't seen much of a difference really whether i fly in mountains or, or normally but you can explore these settings on your own i just have a basic setup of minimum set to 100 maximum set to 600 and then all tlod base for me is set to 500 uh, 500 feet what this does is uh, anywhere above sorry anywhere below 500 feet my uh, terrain lod is going to be defaulted to 100 or the terrain lod min so below 500 feet it will stick to 100 no matter what fps it's getting and uh, above 500 it is going to interpolate between 100 and 600 to achieve the fps target that i have uh, that i have put in so that's what uh, this alt tlod base means and then uh, average descent rate i've put this in as 2000 fpm what this is going to do is uh, well so above 500 feet you're going to be at a tlod somewhere in between 100 and 600 
based on whatever your system capability is right now somehow this program needs to know that by the time you reach 500 feet it needs to default back to 100 um, tlod right so that's why you can put in your average descent rate here so so that it, it knows when to start reducing the lod from the high value that it's at to 100 by the time you hit 500 feet so for vfr maybe this can be 1000 feet and for ifr uh, 2000 2500 works just fine depends on how uh, how you set up your vnap profiles and things but 2000 works fine i have unticked decreased cloud quality because i don't want the program to mess with my um, cloud quality at all I want to always leave that on ultra because that's one of the things that i um, really like in this sim is the is the whole cloud density and cloud quality i, I don't want to compensate on that so that's why I leave this unticked. Um, now the OLOD setting or the object LOD setting uh, is, is the concept is exactly opposite of the TLOD setting. So my base setting is set to 200 and my top setting is set to 50. So anywhere below 200 feet, the, oh sorry, my bad. Anywhere uh, below 3000 feet, which is your altitude OLOD base, your uh, OLOD, OLOD is going to be defaulted to 200 just like you saw in TLOD where it was defaulting to your minimum value. So for example, right now I'm on ground at Boston, our OLOD is defaulting to uh, 200, right? And TLOD is defaulting to 100, like I've said it here. Not sure why my FPS is so low. I was just getting really good performance, but maybe it's because my SIM is not in focus or something. I'm not sure. I'll mess with that later. It worked just fine a few minutes back. Anyway, so below 3000 feet, the OLOD uh, base is going to be, def well, OLOD is going to be defaulted to the OLOD base. And uh, as you start climbing above 3000, uh, it'll, it'll see that, oh, uh, now the aircraft is high enough to start reducing the OLOD from 200 to somewhere around 50, right? What it, It'll interpolate between 200 and 50. And uh, anywhere above 10,000 feet, it is going to default to OLOD at top of 50, which we have set it here. And when you hover, o hover over any of these settings, you're going to see an explanation of that setting, which is great. So you don't have to play the guessing game or open the document always uh, whenever you have a confusion of what any of these settings are doing. Because if, if, you really if you read through the description of each of these, it is really confusing um, in, the, in the documents. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much what my settings look like on auto FPS, and I've seen that it definitely leads to a more you know stutter-free experience. Um, you'll get consistent frame performance, and uh, you will also be able to get better better visuals because uh, first of all, MSF like by default you would ideally be just setting your TLOD to one single value, right? Which is your minimum value that you would set it to. To get the best performance throughout the flight which will be limited by uh, when you're at a, at an add-on airport or something right but then uh, you're also compensating on visuals when you're in the sky so this really allows you to um, fix that problem and and you won't have to compensate on visuals above whatever altitude you set here right so yeah that's great uh, if you guys are into flight simulation aviation in general uh, please make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel i am pretty sure i won't disappoint you with my content and uh, you can always uns unsubscribe if you feel like i'm wasting your time thank you guys for watching and i will see you on the next one